Hello, everyone. Welcome to this talk by Verena Burrell. Um, and welcome to Re Becoming the One. So I am super excited to share with you our guest and beloved friend today, uh, Verena Borel. So Martha and I met Verena separately, but I met you, Martha, through Verena. Mm -hmm. And I met you, Verena, because we were studying evolutionary astrology together. And it's been a number of years now, and I feel like we've walked many different paths, you know, in mm -hmm. previous lifetimes, probably. And also in this lifetime. And so every single time I sit down to talk with you and to channel and contemplate astrological wisdom with you, I'm just always so lit up by the transmissions that come through you. And I love the depth of your reflections, your insights. And yeah, I'm excited to see what comes through today. Wow, thank you so much, Jonathan, for this intro. And thank you, Martha, for having me. Thank you, Jonathan, for having me. It's such a pleasure and really Venus and Leo and um, joy and excitement to be here with two of my yeah, closest soul friends. And I already said before I restarted the recording that with when I talk to you, Jonathan, things come out of my mouth. I have no idea where they are coming from. There is a very yeah, special magic between you and me and our two souls coming together. And I'm sure we have met in many lifetimes in other dimensions too before. And the same with you, Martha, when, yeah, I can remember our first official talk one year ago for the Rebecoming the One, um, the first symposium. And I, yeah, I immediately felt this flow of energy between you and me and um, really our, yeah, our hearts inspiring each other. And um, it's incredible to be together with both of you now. So I'm really excited and very grateful that you invited me, Martha, and that Jonathan is your co-facilitator in this week. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm excited. I'll second all of that and also just say I've I've connected with you, Verena, directly and you, Jonathan, directly, but never the three of us together. So this is, True. I'm ready for this to unfold yeah. and see what yeah. wanting to come through. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time that the three of us are in the same room together. Um, yeah. So I'm going to begin by sharing your bio with everyone, Verena, um, and then we'll talk about the topic that you are uh, coming to us with today. So here's your bio. Brina Borel lives and works as an evolutionary astrologer and channel in Villa, Austria. To expand and deepen the wisdom school of the evolutionary astrology by Jeffrey Wolf Green, Verena enriches it with other astrological branches like archetypal or shamanic astrology. Additionally, she connects daily with her own spirit guides and reads the Akashic records. For Verena, evolutionary astrology and the Akashic records are divine tools for deconditioning, healing, rewilding, and raising consciousness. The healing of the world begins with the healing of the individual, you. Verena's mission is to guide other souls on their healing and awakening journey so that they can let go of their limiting chains and follow their true soul's nature. Verena offers one-on-one -on -one astrology and Akashic record sessions in German and English language and also teaches astrology in online programs and workshops. And today you are bringing to us and everyone who is present in the symposium, this topic of the Venus cycle in Leo, embrace your specialness, heal playfully and co-create a new world, which even just reading the title, I feel really excited. <laughs> and I feel this kind of radiant energy coming through. Um, so I definitely want to hear everything that you feel you want to share, Verena, or that wants to come through you in the front end of this topic. Um, but maybe start us off with talking a little bit about what a Venus cycle is and why this particular um, Venus cycle in Leo is significant in your perspective. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for reading my bio and yeah. Um, yeah, to, I try to make it very simple 
for you if you are not familiar with astrology and with planetary cycles. So maybe you as a listener, as somebody who attends to the symposium knows about the moon cycle. And as the moon, every planet has a cycle. And so has planet Venus. And the Venus cycle starts when Venus comes together in one line at the same zodiac degree with the sun. That is the start of every Venus cycle. And then Venus um, starts her journey, her heroine, heroine's journey, and she goes, the, the whole cycle um, is 18 months until she comes back to meet the sun again. And there are different phases in the cycle. So we have a morning star phase, which lasts about eight months. Then we have an underworld phase where Venus is actually behind the sun, so far furthest away from the earth. We cannot see her in the night, in the night sky for around 40 days. And then she comes back, we can see her again in the sky, then as an evening star. And then she comes closer and closer and closer to Earth. We see her in the sky rising higher and higher and higher and gaining more brilliance. And then Venus goes retrograde and starts the new cycle. And the new start, the start of the cycle when she meets the sun, then Venus is closest to the Earth. Mm -hmm. So she is in retrograde motion at this time. Um, which is a little bit complicated to describe without any graphics, but it's, I think the most important thing to know is the Venus cycle starts when she's, she's conjunct the sun and closest to the earth. Mm. And why I wanted to talk about the Venus cycle um, is that we have a new cycle every 18 months. Wait, is it 18 months or 19? Venus, Mer 18. 18. Mercury is retrograde at the moment, and I'm a little bit insecure. Yeah, <laughs> 18. Um, and um, we have the start of the new cycle at um, in August 13 at in 20 degree Leo 28, 20, 28 minutes. And the last cycle started at the beginning of the year 2022 in Capricorn. And the point where the Venus cycle starts gives always the overtone or an overarching topic for the whole Venus cycle. So it is like when we have the new moon, so we have the overarching topic for the whole moon month. And so where the Venus cycle starts, so we have this overarching topic, themes, things, energies for the whole cycle. And yeah, I think that is maybe the most important things. Yeah. Yes. I was also going to add for people, um, <clears throat> I will link with this video, actually a, a video from this Three Becoming One last year that Sheridan Semple did that goes into very very detail like lots and lots of detail with graphics and everything of the whole venus cycle if people want to go understand it more deeply just just what a venus cycle is but um here with verena i think we're really going to be diving into the what it means for us to have venus now starting this new cycle in leo but if you want again if you want more of the details of what a venus cycle is and what that means i'll put that video too yeah, great, great. Um, I just really looked it up, um, the duration. It's 584 days. So it's, yeah, I would say between 18 and 19 months. <laughs> that is uh, the correct number. Um, yeah, and now with the Venus cycle in Leo, um, what is important for me is 
to look a little bit where we are coming from. So we are coming from a Venus cycle in Capricorn. And um, during the time with Venus, with this Venus cycle in Capricorn, um, I think that we experienced so much um, around deconditioning and becoming aware of our roles and rules that we have, that we, um, yeah, took over from society, from our education, from our caregivers, from our culture. And it was a time where many of us became aware where we actually stick to roles and rules of life and gender roles and gender paradigms that are not natural to our soul. And where we are thinking that we have to follow certain rules and patterns and what is a man, what is a woman and how we are in a relationship that two people come together and all of these very outdated and pretty unnatural rules and roles. And many of us become, became aware of that. And I mean, last year, the Rebecoming the One Symposium was such, yeah, was so huge and it totally was in tune of this deconditioning process. So really asking, um, is it true how I live my gender? Is it true how I express myself um, in regard to sexuality, to um, how I live my gender identity and so on. And I think many of us had these awakenings or these processes of becoming aware and decondition, um, observe and decondition from these um, very yeah, outdated um, conditions. And the power of the Venus cycle and Capricorn was really, or the opportunity or the healing opportunity was really um, to yeah, become our own authority and to really making our own rules or starting to make our own rules and to, um, yeah, become aware of these out, yeah, of these conditionings in order to restructure our psyche, our life and find natural new structures and natural new roles and rules. And Venus was, was that is more for the astro nerds here. Venus had so many, um, she started in a conjunction with Pluto. She had then um, her exterior conjunction in a square, in Libra, in a square to Pluto. So there were so many Pluto aspects where it was all about, when you asked me about, yeah, reclaiming our power, taking our power back to us, not giving our power away to external authorities, to external systems who tell us how we should live our life and how we should live our gender identity. And I know that, I mean, I'm in Europe, I'm, in, I'm living in Austria, but I know how intense it still is in the US in regard to all of these um, laws around sexual identities. And I mean, this is Venus and Capricorn for me um, in the shadow and in the healing opportunity to really mm -hmm. um, become um, self-sovereign, soul-sovereign and body-sovereign again. And yeah. for sure, there are the Uranus and Taurus topics that come with that too, but I don't want to go so far out. Um, and I mean, this is where we are coming from and where we are still in. And Venus will start her, her new journey, her new cycle in, um, on August 13th in Leo. And for me, um, Leo in general is really, I mean, Leo is ruled by the sun. Leo is really this, the, for me, the highest expression of Leo is really that I, I am a light that is sourced by divine light. And my soul incar incarnated in the body to self-express. And in this moment, I express the light of the divine. And I am the channel 
that shares the light of the divine. And therefore I am special. I'm as special as every other human being and being on this planet because we are all sourced by the divine light. And this is for me a powerful expression of Leo. And in Aries, the first fire sign, we incarnate, we come into the onto Earth, we um, we understand that um, to live as the divine on planet Earth, we have to individuate and we are um, discover ourselves. And then in Leo, the second fire sign, we actually self-actualize, we self-express. We really become that light. We are not trying, um, we are becoming that light. And um, therefore, for me, Aries is so much about the fundamental right to be here and to take up space. It's really the initiation of our ego. And Leo is the right to be here and to creatively express and to unfold the ego and to be loved and to be light. And when we now look at Venus, the facet of the feminine energy, or our feminine essence. Um, for me, Venus and Leo is really this solar feminine. It's the light, it's the strength, it's the reclamation of our heart and body as incarnated soul on planet Earth. And to um, come back to what I said, about Capricorn and um, for the astro professionals here in the natural zodiac Capricorn and Leo build an in conjunct. And I think that is really, really interesting to know because um, I think that it is really about, okay, what are the rules? What are my rules of life so that I can creatively self express and not feel restricted? And there's a very delicate balance. And I think now, after we have done all of these deconditioning work and we are still in the process of it, the Venus and Leo cycle has really the opportunity to freely express and actualize our true nature, also in regard to our sexuality and our gender roles. So after becoming aware of our conditioning, we can now explore and express and self-actualize and unfold what really wants to come through us. And I think that um, on the one hand, it's really about this opportunity to, to become the playful and powerful creator that we already are. And really this creating from the heart, Leo rules the heart. So creating and Venus is the heart chakra. So it's really creating from the heart as a channel and creating as a channel for divine life force energy. And I think that um, there's another, another thing that I want to mention and then maybe um, I will stop and ask you um, what is coming up for you. Because I think that um, it is very interesting that we have this Venus in Leo cycle now starting in August 2023 and lasting until um, March 23rd, 2025. Um, and this is the time when Pluto dances between Capricorn and Aquarius. Actually, when Venus is retrograde, she will in conjunct Pluto and, uh, Pluto and Capricorn, but then she will be in her Leo cycle when Pluto enters Aquarius again. And Aquarius is the opposite sign to Leo. So there are there is a polarity. And I think that it's, it's really the Venus and Leo energy is so important to not 
step into the shadow side of Aquarius. Shadowy Aquarius can be that we lift off the ground, that we detach from our emotions, that we detach from our heart, that we detach from our body. And Venus and Leo says really, okay, come into your body, express joyfully from your heart, um, yeah, live your natural sexuality and your natural creativity. I will come back to that later. And therefore, um, share your specialness and your gifts, what wants to come through you with the community. And then we are coming into the highest expression of Aquarius that many, all individuals come together, share their authentic gifts and therefore create a community um, of beings that are on an equal level and support each other and uplift each other by sharing their authentic gifts. I just have one really quick question. Up here. I have a quick question, a technical question, and then I want to hand it over to Jonathan. Mm -hmm. So when the, the next Venus sun conjunction happens, would it be at like two or three degrees of Aries? Do you know? Yes. Okay. I can say it exactly. So we have now in August starts a Venus cycle in Leo, and then in March 2025 starts the Venus cycle in two degrees, 39 minutes Aries. Yeah. Which and is, that's super important too. That's really fascinating that we've talked about this in other talks we've done, but that, anyway, that's so close to the zero point of Aries, right? Where we just had a new moon and then all oh, anyway that is a whole other topic but that and this is the time where neptune and saturn will enter aries too so so during venus has her cycle in aries not at that time at that point when she starts the cycle saturn and um, neptune are still in pisces but in the time when she is in this venus and aries cycle in 2025 and 26 they will change signs when I'm correct yeah so yeah I have some I have like a feeling about that and I would love to come back to circle back to that but Jonathan <laughs> actually I'm curious to hear what your feeling is Martha oh even okay close to, yeah <laughs> since you already brought it up um well I'm just thinking about I've been getting so many messages that I, I've talked about in other videos about this zero point of Aries and it feels to me like like on a meta level, on a spiritual level, there's this start, like there's this new thing that we're starting, right? And there's many versions of the start, but <clears throat> to have to have the Venus cycle starting in 2025, so close to that, that zero point of Aries, plus, uh, what did you say, Uranus and Saturn? Wait, oh my goodness, not a Uranus. Oh Neptune. 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 <laughs> Neptune and Saturn, both about to enter Aries at that time also. So in this year, yeah. In in 2025. I think, I hope. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay Don't I'll look it up. up. But yeah. But anyway, what I'm just, what I'm feeling is that um, certainly at the least, we're clear that Venus and the sun will conjunct in March 20, on March 23rd, 2025 at that almost that zero point of Aries, which is the very, very, very first degree of the entire Zodiac, right? So um, when I think of sort of the bookends of these Venus cycles, there's, we just are finishing the Venus cycle in Capricorn, and then we're heading toward eventually in 2025, the Venus cycle in Aries. And in the middle, we have this upcoming Venus cycle in Leo. So, so it's kind of like, if we have been deconditioning our conditioning and our the structures of how we interact with the Venusian themes, and now we're heading toward in 2025, this sort of start point, it's like, like to me, what I'm feeling is this really beautiful, cool opportunity that we now, we now get to have this period of time, 18, 19 months where, <clears throat> where we what is what is it that we get to do before we start well we get to like dive deep into leo we get to dive deep into ourselves as um 
what comes up for me is source life energy itself. Like, oh, uh, yeah. And um, just, and that creative life force and our bodies, like the reality of creation as being a very embodied thing. So that uh, when we start the new, we're coming from that place as opposed to the conditions we've been in or what our brain thinks we're supposed to do or it's just beautiful that that's what that's what's mainly coming up for me yeah wow i love that i love that martha i feel like you know it's also making me really think about how leo being ruled by the sun is a reminder that when we really allow ourselves to love the part of us that wants to be the center of gravity in our universe, then there's there's a sense, I've been thinking about the sun a lot as the one that organizes the rest of the solar system, right? The one um, that holds the gravitational point for the rotation of all the other heavenly spheres. And with Venus being in the sign of Leo, I think there's also an opportunity to not just allow ourselves to be playing that role, but to actually enjoy and to love seeing how reality can shift based on our gravity, right? And us really loving that part of ourselves that, um, that likes to shine, you know? And, and I think it's interesting too, what you were saying earlier, Verena, about how Capricorn is so much about deconditioning from social roles and how, you know, with Aries, I think there's kind of a, you know, Venus and Aries in 2025, I think is starting a new cycle of ferociously really embodying that individual way that we love, right? And not really being so stuck in that Capricornian uh, structure. And it's interesting because I took a peek and I saw that actually the next uh, Venus Sun conjunction after that in 2026 is going to be happening in Capricorn again, it seems. <laughs> so it looks but like there's actually the exterior another. Or interior. Maybe it's the exterior. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the exterior. Yeah, that's I can imagine that the um, exterior is, yeah. Yeah, because then I guess the next one is in August, right, 2027. And that's also in Leo. Anyways, I think it's really fascinating to be thinking about then this dance between like Aries and Leo being about like the work that we do from, you know, when I think about Leo, I really think about our heart center. And when I think about Aries, I think about our solar plexus and kind of this push and pull between like the action that we want to put forward, right? Um, maybe even like our boundaries, like thinking about Aries as like that pushing energy, right? Like pushing out, pushing something out of our aura, pushing something out of our um, feel that doesn't really resonate with us and our boundaries anymore. But then the heart kind of receiving, right? Or kind of emanating that energy of like attracting. So yeah, that's what's coming up for me. What is so interesting, first of all, I want to say because there's something that is just on my mind and I have to put it out of my mind. I made a mistake um, about the underworld phase. So Venus is around 90 days in the underworld. So 90 days. I said 40 days. She's retrograde 40 days and she's in the underworld 90 days. And it's Mercury retrograde when we um, record this. And I really feel how the numbers are mixing up in my head. So I apologize for that. That's not so professional, but yeah. Um, now I come back to the heartfelt wisdom yeah. and what you just, just hmm? the heart the heart is the why we're here I'm not yeah yeah I'm not get worried about those things yeah. I let go of my Capricornian conditioning around uh, professionality and come back to the Venus joy um what I think it's so interesting that you both talked about or feel this Aries Leo because it's so interesting that Venus will build a trine to the new North Node in Aries when she starts her cycle. So we have this Venus trine to the North Node in Aries when she starts her cycle. And then when she starts her cycle, she is 
Um, we have the yeah we have the North Northern Aries. She's the ruler of the South Node in Libra. I think we want to talk about that later. Um, but um, I think there is something around this Leo and fiery Aries energy. And Martha, what you said, this starting a new point and zero degree Aries. Um, I know we 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 all talked in different other talks about that, but I really feel that. Um, we are now, when we're recording this in April, we are in eclipse season. We just had the first Aries solar eclipse. It feels like now a new phase starts, a new phase that will last longer. We are at the beginning of a new phase. And I feel that this Venus and Leo cycle is really the, yeah, the celestial embodiment of something that we are invited to explore within our own heart, within our own body, within our own psyche, um, around the self-allowance to self-express. And I really feel that with Aries, the first fire sign, it's really the spark of inspiration. Jonathan, you mentioned the solar plexus. I also feel it really in the gut. So really the solar plexus and um, sacral, chakra energy, this gut feeling that instinct, Aries is really instinctual in a good way. So what really pulls me forward and I follow this spark and mm -hmm. I have trial and error on my way. And then with Leo, it's really not only about, I have the right to be here as an individual, but also I have the right to take up space and to self-express and to creatively express myself. And I think there is something around, do I allow myself to do that? Do I allow myself to follow my joy? Mm. Or do I, or am I afraid of taking up space? Am I afraid of maybe not fulfilling the expectations of others? The shadow side of the Libra South Node, or do I um, am I living um, against rules? The Capricorn in conjunct to Leo, when I'm too playful, too joyful, maybe too in a, in, a, in regard to our sexuality too. Um, am I allowed to really listen to my animal body, um, which is Leo too? for me, this really juicy connection between heart, body, soul, creativity. And um, as I'm saying, creativity and sexuality, it's the same force of life. It's the same life, life force energy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we repress our sexuality, we also repress our creativity. Yeah. And when we because of maybe a trauma response or of a coping mechanism, fawn or adapt or people please and repress our sexuality, our gender identity, our, our natural ways, then we repress our creativity, our life force energy, our vitality, our eros, our, yeah, the ability to create our own life and also the ability to contribute to a world that needs our gifts because we incarnated for a reason. Mm -hmm. So that always sounds a little bit cheesy, but it's true, I think. Um, yeah. it's, it's no coincidence that you are here with your special gifts. And mm -hmm. it's really about unpacking and coming back to this essence and therefore really giving ourselves the opportunity to unfold like a flower unfolds its petals and really i have the feeling that this stage starts now mm. in this spring and in this summer mm. and that this leo cycle and leo really is the symbol the celestial symbol or the indicator of a process of an inner process that wants to unfold in regard of our of our sexuality of our creativity the healing of our natural soul self the rewilding so leo is about courage it's about really sharing what wants to come through us um, no, no matter what others expect us to be 
-hmm. And I know that um, no matter if it is in regard to our sexuality or in regard to, yeah, what we want to offer and what we want to bring into the world, it's so scary. It's so scary to show up um, from the heart. Definitely. I, I was really feeling your subtitle for this talk and you brought up specialness, playfulness and creation. And what this is bringing up for me is something that I've been thinking a lot about what it means personally for me to be queer, because it's really interesting because we live in this world where, you know, I remember when I, when I came into contact with the rawness of you know, what my sexuality, what my authentic sexuality feels like, I realized that basically it's, it's this trap, right? Like if I come out <laughs> as not being straight and then I say that I am a gay man, there's a certain way that a gay man is supposed to be, supposed to look like and supposed to act, right? And I realized very quickly within months of kind of coming into terms with that for myself, I didn't even really want that. <laughs> And then it's like, I don't want to get out of a box. I don't want to get out of a closet just to get into another closet. Like, yeah. I want to define, and for me, as a very mutable person, as a Virgo rising, <laughs> Pisces sun, Gemini moon, like, I need to have a fluid container. And I need that definition to be fluid. Because I don't know, how can I know how my creative or my sexual energy will express itself in five months I, I have no yeah. idea you know I don't know who I'll be in five months and so I love what you were saying there about specialness Verena and I'm curious to hear maybe you riffing a little bit more and also Martha if anything is coming through around this connection between specialness playfulness and creation and also creativity yeah Martha you you touched okay it's like what you just talked about was exactly what I was just feeling except with regard to my 16 year old and actually myself too I was just about to say almost identical to what you just said <laughs> just not about you <laughs> so so you and I Jonathan already interviewed um Natasha Levenger and in that video we spoke we focused a lot on the needs of our youth who identify as queer in various ways, particularly transgender and non-binary. And that's one of my passions, huge passions. Probably my biggest passion about doing this whole symposium is really, you know, we're we're co-creating a world yeah. that our kids actually, their life depends on it, like for real, <laughs> right? So. I mean, not to mention our own, but that, that's what I really care about ultimately is my kids. And in particular, my kid who happens to be transgender. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking about them and this Venus and Leo cycle. And it's what keeps coming up for me as we're talking is this idea that when I'm watching my 16 year old around and then their process with their whole gender identity and self-expression and and sexual orientation and all of it I really I don't have any answers at all I'm I feel like an observer to like a whole new world honestly but part of what I feel like I'm witnessing is exactly this this like Leo energy that has to be held and nurtured to be exactly whatever it is with yeah. no preconceived notions whatsoever of what it means to be quote unquote a girl or a boy or non-binary or whatever it is um and in my 16 year old's world I mean they happen to be super 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 into theater right so that's also a very leo thing so I'm watching and and the whole theater community at, at their school is pretty queer identified so it's fascinating it's like it's like getting to just watch this whole world of kids 
doing the Leo thing, like Mm -hmm. Venus and Leo actually, (laughs) right? Like wearing this version of clothing and then that version of clothing and identifying in this way and asking to be named X, Y, Z thing. Um, and, and most often what I'm at least observing, I think is they're really not following any boxes that I could normally have created in my own mind. Right. Like, yeah, like there's maybe somebody identifying, you know, having been born identified as a boy now realizing they want to identify, they want to be uh, called, they want to switch their name to a quote unquote girl name, Mm. et et, et cetera. And yet they're wearing quote unquote boy clothes. And, you know, it's like, and it's all what it is, just whatever it is. Um, And that feels so important that that is held. I really, I really would like to share Martha and Jonathan about yeah, some what was coming up um, when you when you just shared that. Um, I think first of all, I consider Leo as an archetype as the inner solar child. So the child that wildly paints and then runs to its caregivers and says, "Mommy, Daddy, Grandma, what?" Who shares and who just has no no idea around being perfect or how you behave. It's this solar child and we all have it in our soul. And it is so often repressed, put down and not seen parents or caregivers who had just no time or no energy to be there. I mean, it must not always be this super traumatic um, situation at home. It's enough if the caregivers had to work to, yeah, to have enough money to survive and the children had no one who sees their specialness and who appreciates their specialness and who cuddles them and to, who just adores them. And I think that in so many of us, there is still this wounded solar child who just wants to be seen and appreciated in the way we are. And I think that what you just described, Martha, um, with your, yeah, your your children, and um, this, by the way, I think that Impro will have a huge comeback. And I think that there is something about really, um, I think it is a natural, um, a natural flow of energy that after we live in a very patriarchal hierarchical system over lifetimes, that there comes this deep, deep desire to really just play and to really just try out who we want to be. And this is for me a mix between Leo and Aries. So Aries is more the self-discovery, Leo is the self-expression. And I have all the time this image of a playground in my head. And for sure the playground needs some kind of safe structures that we can play there careless but um i think maybe this leo uh, this venus and leo cycle invites us in a way to in a very and i love astrology because of that because astrology shows us which energies are in the field so that we can consciously co-create and interact with them so maybe an invitation Um, A very practical invitation with this Venus and Leo cycle could be that every soul, everyone here in the room with us maybe, yeah, thinks about how can I create maybe a safe safe playground or a, a stage or something where I feel safe enough to express myself. And maybe that is an impro theater group. Maybe this is a circle of friends where I feel safe, 
where I can even um, play with my sexuality, with my self-identity. Maybe this is a group of people who you meet here in this environment of the symposium. Maybe, so maybe it's first of all, just for yourself that you maybe attend an, to an art class or that you do something like that where you really allow yourself in a way that feels not too threatening because I think it's really important to be very self-reflective in regard of our trauma and if our soma, our body is ready to open and to try um, new things and to yeah open up in a way and to show up but yeah to find a safe playground um, where we yeah allow ourselves to step into this Leo energy mm -hmm. and to really allow ourselves to completely feel what wants to be expressed. And it's maybe in regard of our, to our sexuality and try out there what feels natural, mm. or it is maybe in regard to another form of sexuality, creativity. Um, and we maybe wanna start to sing or to, to write or to, to paint or to dance or mm -hmm. to, to show our offerings as healers or as astrologers or as mystics. And I think that it's important for the Leo energy and the archetype that we don't override our own boundaries and um, do that in an environment that is too threatening. So maybe we don't have to sing in front of our dad who we know will judge us. So I think it's really about like with children that you start small and then you, you widen your boundaries in a way. So yeah. first, yeah, do it in a safer circle. That would be a very practical idea around the Venus and Leo cycle. I think that's really important, Brina. And I'm so glad you brought that up because um, this idea of like the safe playground has been coming up a lot for me. Um, and this past weekend, I went to a friend's birthday and a bunch of us who identify as queer were there. And it's really fun to be in conversation and to know. So a little bit of a backstory. I would say in 2021, I really started to realize how I personally really identify as being non-binary. And then I, for some time, played around with communicating to others that my, my preferred pronoun would be they, them. But then I realized it creates this really interesting thing where like people are like tiptoeing around me. You know, they're like, am I using the right pronoun? I'm not comfortable. Like, and, and this really awkward thing I think was really necessary. And I think for some people that was really what was right for them and they they really um get a lot out of being correctly identified with that pronoun but for me on the other end of that I actually realized that I don't care <laughs> about which pronoun people use so now I I would go on zoom and I would actually put any pronoun next to my name and this past weekend I had this this experience of being at a friend's birthday party and all of us were queer and all of us didn't care about the pronoun <laughs> that we use and so we, we would switch in between sentences and we would create this insane cocktail of pronouns so in the middle of this person referring to me they would say she and then would say he and I would say they and it was just like love a little party you know it's so wild and also something that I would would maybe invite those listening to try out is I've been doing this practice that I think was inspired by something one of my teachers Diana Rose said around talking to the body 
So mm. I've been talking to my body and specifically different body parts and asking that body part what pronouns they want me to use in that moment. And this is a very private practice, right? To go back to your idea, Verena, of the safe playground. Like this is, this doesn't have to exist outside of your journal, right? Like this only exists in my journal. But this morning, my tummy was telling me, I'm a she. Today, I am a she. So then I was referring in my journaling practice to my tummy as a she. And it felt really good. <laughs> and it really helped me appreciate, you know, the roundness of my stomach, you know, my excess fat. And I'm just like, look at you, giving me a little comfort. And it was just really cute. <laughs> and, and it's so fascinating because I think this idea of Leo being really tied to playing and appreciating the play and how play really opens up the heart, I think starts with, with our own individual practices, right? And I think it's so much easier for us to be in that space of appreciating others when we also give ourselves permission to fully appreciate ourselves. Yeah, and this is, Martha, is it okay when I, when I share what I wanted to share or did you want, okay. Because there are two things. The first one, I would like to come back to the body, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. And the second one is this idea that it's really about giving yourself the permission and appreciate yourself. So I will first start with the body. And I, I showed you already before we recorded, I pulled to today. I pull a tarot card every day and I pull the strength card. So it's actually the German Kraft, it's strength. And there you see a Leo and an angelic figure. And I don't want to go into all of the details, but for me, I feel so much this um, coming together of spirit, soul, and body in this card. And I think that we have so colonialized and traumatized bodies. I mean, we grew up over lifetimes. When you look from the perspective of evolutionary astrology, we grew up over lifetimes in systems and structures where we learn from an early age to repress our body, to not listen to our body. I mean, in school, we already, in kindergarten, we already learned to not listen to our body, to be, to sit still, to behave and tell our body how it should behave. And I think your practice of asking your body what it feels, and especially in regard to sexuality, asking your body what it wants and not just about intercourse or something like that really about sexuality in a broader sense so really what what lights our fire up what brings eras into our life and i think that and i mean to be completely authentic and honest and courageous here it's a huge topic for me personally. So I, the repression of my own body or that I don't feel where are my boundaries or that I don't feel what I really want or need is huge because I always learn to override my physical needs and boundaries to perform. And, to, and this is a Leo shadow, to do things so get, that I get external validation that I'm not coming from my heart and not, I'm not aligned with my body, actually. To override my own boundaries and to detach from my body, from my heart, because there was such, I mean, I have worked on that so much, and, but over years in my life, I completely lost my path because I was in the shadow of Leo, I wanted completely unconscious. I was seeking for love and appreciation. And I just, I just wanted to hear you are special. I see you, I love you. And you are um, perfect as you are. And I see you. And for, to get this feeling, 
I completely lost my path and I did what others, what I, what I, what I experienced that I get a good feedback. So I go there and then I push and I, for sure, I never, I never reached this state of, I feel seen, I feel loved because when I reached it, it, the people who, yeah, went out of my life. And yeah. it's a journey to really um, understand that, as you were saying, we it's it's a way of coming back to our own body, coming back to, um, yeah, seeing ourselves and appreciate appreciate ourselves and allowing ourselves to really um, be as we are and see the light in ourselves mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's actually a very i think leo can be and especially i think venus and leo because venus is about relationship and the deep desire to be loved too and i think venus and leo can be very very painful and um very yeah can yeah as as controversially as it sounds, but really can bring us away from our heart when we are in this shadow expression. And I think especially Venus as a ruler of the South Node in Libra, and the shadow of Libra is people pleasing too, because we want to fulfill the expectations of others and are so focused on the other, on our counterpart. And I think there is something, maybe it is important to be aware of that, so that we can more consciously, um, yeah, play <laughs> and work with these feelings when we recognize they're coming up in us. And because we live, I think, in a world that is changing so much. Mm. And many of us, I, I see it in my life, I see it in the life of my clients, this Aquarius mm. thing that when we evolve, um, we, we experience that, um, we yeah that friends of us are no longer friends because we change in different directions and then we maybe feel alone and feel lost and then it is then the leo desire to to be seen comes up and then there is this um um yeah this challenge not to um fall into people pleasing patterns or fawning patterns or um that we adapt and that we um, lose our heart again in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think one, one last word, and then I, I will stop. Um, I think that in Aquarius we have, we can feel so lonely because when we start to be authentic, we can feel so lonely, but in Leo, we can feel so lonely too, because when we really, um, decide to live in alignment with our heart um, and it's the first stage I think in the first stage we really recognize who is not in alignment with us and who we maybe just wanted to please and who is actually not really resonating with us mm -hmm. and with our heart frequency so I think there is always, but I think in Aquarius and in Leo, it's always just a phase because when we really go into this energy and when we are courageous and brave enough to endure this, then we will automatically um, pull other souls in our life who are on the same heart frequency, heart frequency, very Leo Aquarius mm -hmm. as us. And um, this will free us in a way um yeah 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 jonathan do you, i have thoughts but I it feels to like hear, too. <laughs> i want to hear your thoughts martha oh. <laughs> well the main thing coming up for me is um <clears throat> similar to what we were just talking about with gender identity also with sexual orientation so when I think of Leo, I think of the the flower and the, the relationship of the flower to the sun mm -hmm. and the reality that we are all unique flowers that have this 
relationship, the sun helps us to open our petals all the way and to truly, truly be that unique being that we are. And so then we can just, you know, sort of surrender into the relationship we have with the light, with God, with source. And, and that to me, that's the ultimate expression of Leo. Um, So this parallels what we were talking about with the gender identity, but I feel like it needs to be named also given the nature of the symposium. When I think about sexual orientation as related to what you were saying, Jonathan, I, I also wonder what it would be like for us to just be with our sexuality, to be with our sexual desires, how that energy wants to move, et cetera, and even just experiment with letting go of the labels, letting go of anything other than allowing that sunlight that is us to move, right? Mm -hmm. So I know last year at the symposium, I heard from a number of people who said, this symposium is the first place I've ever felt safe to recognize even to myself that I'm not straight. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for, for a number of people, it seemed to be that their, their truth was not so much that they were straight or gay. They were somewhere in the whole spectrum of it which I mean, I personally identify with because I identify as pansexual, right? So, but that seemed to be what was kind of getting evoked in a number of people. And this feels very Venus and Leo is like this this way of approaching sexual orientation as um, what does the creative life force that is me naturally want to be as this unique flower that is me? How does that life force energy naturally move as me and what is the like what are the different roles for me for for me personally of maybe having um my sexuality want to move in relationship to people of various genders at various moments in my life either just even in my own consciousness or actually in an actual relationship or at, you know etc cetera, etc cetera. there you go that's my thought <laughs> Yeah, I think it's interesting, Martha, because something that is a thread that I'm kind of seeing come out of this conversation between the three of us is this idea of, you know, the connection between the first and the fifth house, right, on an astrological, from an astrological perspective, uh, the first and the fifth house are in a trine to one another, right, the first house speaks to identity, our relationship with our body and our existence in this world. And the fifth house speaks to our creativity, the way that we express ourselves, right? And the manifestation of who we know ourselves to be out in the world, right? Including children and creativity. And I think it's interesting that very often we would put our sexuality in the fifth house, but then also we live in the society where who we are or what our sexuality is or our sexual sexual expression and gender expression is also deeply tied to that first house, right? Like even just the way that we address one another with the pronouns, right? Is very, um, it's kind of a, a crystallized, uh, um, a solidified way of like expressing who we are right, or like boxing us, and what does it look like for us to begin to relate to this life force energy that Verena was talking about, right, um, that same energy that drives our sexual energy, that drives our creative energy, to start to relate to it as a force that has its own life and its own direction, rather than simply checking the box, right, exactly yeah. that's exactly and, what i'm trying to say <laughs> precisely and, and i think that i feel the urge to bring in gemini mm-hmm. because what is really interesting is first of all the venus cycle starts in 20 degree leo that is in the traditional decades of the sign the last decade of leo which is ruled by mars traditionally then 
the Venus cycle in Leo starts while we have a Mars cycle in Gemini. Plus what you just said, Jonathan, the ruler of the first house, Aries, is Mars. Plus the exterior conjunction. So the conjunction that Venus has with the sun while she is in the underworld, furthest away from the earth, is actually in 40, 14 degree Gemini. And I had to think about Gemini since you started this conversations about pronounces and not wanting to label yourself and this openness and this curiosity. And I experience also the Mars and Gemini cycle as the celestial indication that there's something to learn around being open and being curious about our own identity and about our own life force energy and about our own sexuality and how we want to yeah go into the world and how we want to label or not label ourselves and i know the one on the one hand gemini wants to label and wants to give things a name to feel safe and secure but on the other hand gemini is very open and very flexible and very curious and also playful, like Leo. Mm -hmm. And I have the feeling that there is something with this Venus and Leo cycle to be very playful with our labels and maybe to, as you were, have this experience on this party, Jonathan, just to have a really fun party around how and see it more, I think, Leo and especially Gemini can have this see ourselves with in a in a very yeah with lots of humor and curiosity and I have really this this image of Venus and Leo with in combination with this Gemini energy really of yeah really like asking our heart what wants to come through me right now and right now and right now and how can I surprise and others with different facets and forms? And I am all of this. These are just different petals of the flower that I am. And I think that there is something very healing and very beautiful in this idea and in this, when we manifest and embody this idea. And when we zoom out a little bit, Pluto in the square to the lunar nodes, we are in this, in this year and in the upcoming years, we are in between worlds, in between lives, in between identities, in between personalities, in between ages. And when we zoom in to this year and maybe the upcoming year, it's really this threshold energy and I think the Venus and Leo cycle indicates that it is also a, a very playful step into a whole new concept around our creativity and our sexuality mm -hmm. and being open and being curious towards ourselves and towards others. I think brings yeah it really helps it really helps mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i love that i love that and not to bypass all of the struggles that come with that because there are mm -hmm. people who judge us there are rules and laws even laws i mean it's insane for someone who lives in europe and see like laws i mean it's it it's yeah I don't want to be political here, but there are there are things that are really um, not so fun. And I think the Leo and Venus cycle maybe and yeah, in this in this in conjunction to Pluto and then in opposition to Pluto, there is something around, I think, yeah, really tuning in with our body and with our somatic capacity too. And mm -hmm see how we can we can create a new world from within with courage 
with brave, braveness, but also with, yeah, a hint of gentleness and the Venus, the Venus energy of self-care and um, yeah, being self, yeah, being gentle, be, have, having self-compassion because living the Leo play is actually not always easy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really love that, Brina. And thank you for, thank you for bringing your wisdom to this conversation. It's been such a rich um, conversation. And I'm curious if either of you have any final thoughts before we wrap up. I just want to add one thing, which is I'm actually not worried at all about being political. <laughs> so in the conversation that Jonathan and I had with Natasha Levenger, we were talking about the reality that she has two teenagers. One is transgender and the other one is non-binary. And she lives in North Carolina, which is one of the states in the United States currently creating these, I would call them life-threatening laws. <laughs> for our kids and um and and her kids don't feel safe living in that state so they are planning to move states and she said it's some she's she also is jewish and she said that there's this ancestral trauma piece for her too with feeling very uh, kind of parallel of um her family's experience having to flee the nazi regime to mm -hmm. and this feels really similar to her right so so for me part of the purpose of this symposium is is to name that reality that kind of reality that is happening it's very scary for so many I happen to live in California I happen to live in this bubble that's like amazing and my transgender child is like supported to the nth degree and I'm so grateful and they're thriving in every way right but um these laws are actually going to kids kids will die like kids will it, this is not good this is it's not it's not political to me it's it's um human justice it's like it's social justice it's human rights and so i'm not scared no i'm not scared at all <laughs> to name I, it yeah. i i think just i feel i feel a bit insecure to talk about that because i live here in austria and i don't have this feeling of being there and i just yeah, I received these informations mostly um, from my US friends. Um, and I think it's, for me, it is absolutely insane. And on the other hand, um, I mean, the situation here in, in Europe and in Austria and in Germany, I think that um, on the one hand, we don't have something like that. But on the other hand, it's, um, it's not that open. So giving the fact that you, the question which pronouns you use, it's not usual or it's not familiar. Mm -hmm. So there are women and there are men. And for sure, when you live in cities like Berlin or Hamburg or Munich, but I would say um, that it's not that open. When I'm, I'm in, in my, I mean, my, I must say, I am deeply involved with astrologers and healers from the U.S. Um, so my spiritual circles are more in the U.S. But when I look around in my environment, um, it's not that open. And I think people who live in Europe um, are confronted with more societal laws and rules and what people say and all of these things that you may be um yeah people make jokes of you when you identify as something else then um, but yeah i really hope that it will change and i i am just living in a bubble and in a u.s bubble and in a austria bubble so i think it will change and in cities like vienna or berlin has already changed but just to yeah to yeah. give this perspective absolutely that's, I, I love yes that's so good because again this is not a united states um symposium this is an incredibly international symposium so 
that's really important to me to hear what's going on all over the world. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the, because Jonathan, you asked me if I feel called to share, I think so beautiful things came through. Um, I really, maybe I just want to, um, yeah, to encourage people and every soul who is listening here to, yeah, to really maybe celebrate this Leo cycle in a conscious way. As I said, astrology just shows up which energies are in the field so that we can interact with them more consciously to be maybe aware of these shadows that I talked about um, and to really, yeah, maybe think about this idea of creating safe playgrounds for our sexual identity, for our creative, um, creatrix and creator uh, identity. And um, I think that on a, on a higher and bigger, um, from a higher and bigger perspective, this Leo, the Venus and Leo cycle feels very significant mm -hmm. to um, make the shift and to return to our nature and to return to the light that we are. And part of expressing our light and light is life force energy, which comes from source means that we allow ourselves to, yeah, to express freely as it feels natural for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Marina. Um, do either of you also want to talk about any offerings that Marina may have? Marina, would you like to talk about how people can deepen into everything that you've been talking about today? Maybe, yeah, any any offerings you have coming up? Yeah, sure, thank you so much. You. <laughs> thank you so much for asking. So um, I think the best way to find out about all of my offerings is to go to my website. Martha has linked my website um, below this talk. And yeah, I'm offering, just to give a quick insight, I give one-on-one um, -on -one evolutionary astrology and Akashic Record sessions in German and English language. And I also teach astrology. So I have um, two courses in German language, which are um, actually, um, yeah, astrology courses, not only for people who want to learn astrology, but also who want to learn astrology as an additional tool, who are already space holders. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you are giving women circles or circles, or if you are a work as a coach and want to integrate astrology into your praxis, um, then my courses are perfect. But these are so far just German. I'm working on an English um, astro program too, but maybe the best way is to, um, yeah, to sign up for my newsletter to learn more about that. I think this will happen maybe in autumn this year. And yeah, the best way to connect is my website, my newsletter. And um, the most important thing is I have a free gift. My free gift is a Venus guide. So there is a version in English and in German. So when you click on my free gift, you are asked which language you want to choose. And this is a beautiful, a uh, little PDF guide, which is totally perfect for you if you have no idea about astrology and if you are an astrologer and like to connect a little bit more with Venus. And the second most important thing is that I will hold a Venus cycle workshop, which is independent from this symposium. So it is not in the container of the symposium, but I'm allowed to talk about it here. And my Venus cycle workshop will happen on July 14th and 15th. On one day, on the 14th, it is in German. On the 15th, it is in English. When you sign up, you get the whole package. Then you can choose which date. And it's at 10 a.m. PST. 
This is 7, P, 7 p.m. CET, so when you live in Europe. And I will dive deeper into the whole, yeah, the whole Venus cycle, the phases of the Venus cycle, and then the topics um, of the Venus cycle in Leo. But I really, really, my goal with this workshop is really to support you or to give you the opportunity to really work with Venus during the whole cycle. So we talk about the Venus gates, how you can really um, co-create and interact with Venus energy and mm -hmm. especially with the Venus and Leo energy. And this workshop is as well perfect for you as an astrologer who wants to really embody and deepen your connection to the Venus energy or as a space holder. So when you are a space holder, a healing practitioner and want to work with the Venus cycle, the Venus gates and so on, the evening, morning star phase, it's perfect for you. So I think for self-love coaches or people who are holding circles, it's very beautiful. And um, you find the link to my Venus cycle workshop below the video. And also you find a discount code there. So because you're coming from Rebecoming the One and I am loving Rebecoming the One and I'm loving you, you get a special price. Um, on the workshop yeah that's thank it. you Marina. it has been such a joy to talk to you thank you just gonna add in one thing that you do also offer <laughs> with me which is <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> no, it's how not. could I forget about that Martha so good to be here with you <laughs> yeah together we offer our goddess series which um Lots of you maybe have already heard of or a part of it even, but yeah, that's continuing. It's going for the whole year. It will continue it next year. Yeah. Uh, we dive into one goddess per month, not Venus, but <laughs> lots and lots of other goddesses. Is there anything else you want to say about that? <laughs> I'm actually super excited and I don't know how I could forget about that because it's so close to my Venus heart and to my heart. And I'm super excited that we, yeah, we dive into one goddess per month. We have a we have a workshop where we really dive into the astrology and into the archetype, and we also guide you through a channeled meditation journey where you you really feel and awaken the goddess energy in yourself. And then two weeks later, we have a sharing circle where we dive into our different experiences with this goddess energy. So I think Martha and I and you too, Jonathan, I think we all have this idea of embodying astrology and really living an astrological life. And so I think our goddess series is so beautiful and it unfolds actually like a flower at the moment. And yeah, we would be so happy if you want to join us. And yeah. Yeah, and probably at around the time of this this week in the symposium, we'll probably be finishing up pan, our month on Pandora, I'm guessing, or yeah, starting the month in, with Pallas Athena, and yeah. then we'll Erisina, and then we'll move into um, some other goddesses, including Astraea, Sedna, which I'm really, you know. really excited about. Yeah. yeah, and more and more and more and more, and many more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exciting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you too. Thank you so much for having me. It means a lot. Thank you.